Okay. The Broncos brought in Packers offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett. Now, Hackett, like, you hate, not that I think that this was Matt LaFleur's offense by any stretch of the imagination, but, I mean, LaFleur is an offensive guy, and now you're going to bring in the offensive coordinator that coached under LaFleur. I, you know, is this a move specifically to try and entice uh, Aaron Rodgers? Because we, we have seen coaching changes made very quickly uh, after a season if things don't go right, if they don't get the right guys in place, etc. NFL teams are not scared to fire a coach after one year. Do you think that it's possible this was just done so that Aaron Rodgers knows somebody there if he were to come over to the Broncos? Uh, maybe, maybe, and, and, and don't think that there's not, you know, inside talk going on. There's not tampering going on with all these guys, okay? Like, if some, there's a world where somebody there knows, hey, Rodgers wants this guy. We want He wants to be in Denver. He wants to play with this coach. You know, he's got a good relationship with this person. You know, you make this happen, and this is just how all the, all the, the pieces start to fall. So that wouldn't surprise me. You know, I, I think there's a chance that after Rodgers – if Rodgers doesn't go there, no matter how they do, Hackett might be a one-year coach anyway because we're going to have new ownership, and new ownership might want some kind of say in what's going to happen to the team that they own. Yep. So that gives you a little bit of an out and, and, and a little bit of a, a little bit of, you know, kind of escape to, to get out of these things. So we did have, let's see, Nathaniel Hackett was the offensive coordinator for the Jaguars – when they actually made the AFC title the game. AFC title game, yeah, with, with Blake Bortles. Yep, show sure enough. So Blake Bortles and uh, Chad Henney was the other quarterback that was uh, that was on the roster. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I could see that. He's been the, uh, the offense coordinator in Green Bay since 2019. So, you know, I mean, he's, I'm sure he's got a good rapport with Aaron Rodgers. But outside of that, I mean, you certainly needed some – some offensive philosophy in Denver, regardless. So, I'm not going to crap on this guy's credentials, but many a coach got a lot of lot of jobs coming out of New England because of Tom Brady. Okay, and and as soon as they didn't have Tom Brady as a quarterback, they looked like shit. They couldn't coach yeah. their way out of a bag. Happened all the time. I'm I'm very leery of hiring somebody who's only. Success came under an elite, elite quarterback because that Blake Bortles team was a defensive team. Oh, that yeah. was Ben Roethlisberger's rookie year, second year when he won the Super Bowl. Like that is a team where just don't go up here and cock it up. Okay. We're going to take the ball away. We're going to get you extra possessions. If we can get to the 20s, we're going to win all these games. He, he did. Yeah, let's see. Da, 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 da. Coach Doug Marone, the Buffalo Bills. Let's see. That's that's who he was with in Buffalo. So in Nathaniel Buffalo, Hackett yeah. was the uh, was the OC when the Bills went nine and seven back now in twenty fourteen. They made a couple of playoff runs with Tyrod. Yeah. So it, he's he's so he had some success good. outside. Like I said, I, for the last four or five years, we only know him as Aaron Rodgers' OC. And, and I say this all the time about LaFleur. Let's be real careful. We're going to take his winning percentage, and we're going to say it's the greatest winning percentage any head coach has ever had in their career, to start their career. That's right. But he also picked a job where he started off with an elite, elite quarterback in his prime. He didn't have to grow him. He didn't have to teach him anything. He didn't have to mature him. He had to take over a machine that already had one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the world his entire time there as a head coach. So let's all be real careful before we just call the floor the greatest head coach of all time. Let's be real careful how we judge Hackett. I, yeah, I think you certainly have a point there. You certainly have a point. They, you know, that he he's been to conference championship games as a uh, as an offensive coordinator. Has not been a head coach before, so yeah. we'll we see. Two guys that just got hired today as head coaches that have never been head coaches before. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE. 
at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.